Hello everyone, we hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the F16C and we're looking at the ALR56 Might RWR Suite. So the RWR, in brief, is a system that allows us to visualize exterior radar emissions from around us from quite a long range, be them friendly or hostile. Examples could be ships with search radars or planes with track radars or search radars or SAMs with various types of radar. And the F-16 will put it into a pilot friendly view, which will be shown on this scope here, to keep up our situational awareness. One thing to note at this point is that it's just a passive system only, it cannot interrogate, and therefore it cannot show you the coalition of the radar contacts, so it could easily be friendly as much as hostile. So first of all, let's look at the basic symbology. And pause, we're gonna to fly towards some contacts. We've already got two contacts up, a Hotel Papa contact and a 29 contact. So if we bring up slice size uh, page here, this is generic, but it works with most modern aircraft. So if we look up a HP, you can see that it is a Grisha type ship. And we can see that it's bearing from us is up to kind of 11 o'clock. So we can see it's that direction there. In fact, there I can actually see it, I think, there. Next is the 229 contact. That's a MiG-29 or an SU-27, which have a very similar radar, which we know is on our nose somewhere. Us, our own ship is in the center there, and we always point upwards. The distance between this contact here and us here tells us the signal strength. So if this guy was much closer to us, that means his signal strength would be higher. That means his icon or symbol would be closer to our own ship here in the center. Note that does not tell you directly the range of the contact though, because different radars will have different signal strengths. This MiG-29 will have a different signal strength to this Grisha ship. As well as a visualization, we also get audio tones. So we get a beep when a new contact appears on the system here. So what we'll do is we'll unpause. Now we've got a beep, we've got a SA-6 out here to our right. It's gonna fire up, there it is, you heard that burp. And there is the SA-6. Now there are three different radar modes that these external radar sources can use. They can use a search, they can use a track, and they can use a fire. A search means that they're searching a general area where we are, or including where we are, but they're not actually focusing on us. If it's a track or a lock, then they are focusing on us, and this means this is danger because it means they can fire at us. If it's a fire, it means that they're tracking us and supporting a missile. So that means we've been launched on. We do not get any tones for the basic search. We will get a tone for when we're being locked or tracked, and we will get a different type of tone when we're being fired on, and we'll see that shortly. So we can see that the SA-6 here, symbolized by the 6 here, is off to our kind of 1 o'clock. And note how it's much closer, or should I say the signal strength is much closer. Now, if we go and look at the, our F-10 map here, the SA-6 is actually further away to the, than the Grisha ship here. And even further away, by three times, is the MiG-29. So that shows how that even though this is further away than the ship, it's closer on here because its signal strength is a much more powerful search radar. Note also the diamond. The RWR system will help as much as it can and it will prioritize a threat. There will only ever be one prioritized threat and it prioritizes the MiG-29 currently as the main threat. If the diamond was over the SA-6, it would consider that as a primary threat. As the situational awareness updates, as we move on, you will see that the primary threat will change. Next, I'm gonna turn up the sound and so we can hear the tones better and we're gonna move on. Currently, none of these radar sources are tracking us. When they do, you will see a change. In the meantime, we can talk about these options here. Handoff, not functional in DCS R. I'm just going to pause that. You hear that beep, 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 beep. That means a track is now tracking us, or one of these radars is now tracking us. It's the SA-6. We know it's the SA-6 because it's now become the priority threat. It's now got the diamond around it. So this means that this threat here is now ready to fire a missile at us. It's our cue to turn around and get out of here. I was talking about these buttons here. Handoff currently does not do anything in DCS. Mode's pretty much standard with all RWRs. It can be open, which means it can display up to 16 contacts. Or if we press it again, we'll get primary, which means it will cut the contacts down to what it considers the five most dangerous threats. So it just declutters it, if you like. Next is T, or target step. This means that if 
some of these contacts, for instance, were all on our nose, then these symbols will be overlapping each other and impossible to read. If we press and hold T, what that does, it will separate the targets temporarily while you're pressing it so that it makes them easier to read. When you release T again, then the symbols will go back to their correct azimuth. Launch will illuminate when a missile has been launched at you, which we'll see in a minute. A system test is a system test. And here we have our unknown ship button. That means that if we have unknown ships, and that will be shown by a U symbol in the area, and we want to filter them out, we can filter them out with this guy here. While we're on the topic of buttons, we've got more buttons down here. We've got four here. Search, altitude, act power. Currently that, that, and that have no effect in DCS at the moment. That may change, but I will let you know. And a basic power system on or off button. We also have brightness control knob here. Either mouse scroll wheel or left click and drag. The next thing is to unpause and get shot at. So let's uh, see what a launch looks like and sounds like. Okay. So we're being launched. This guy is shouting launch at us also there is a flashing circle around the contact that is launching a missile at us also there's a change in the tone you can hear and we can probably visualize the missile out here somewhere uh, there it is out there on our one two o'clock so we're now fully aware that we're being shot at and we're going to dodge let's just fly into the missile for a bit so you can see there okay so we're going to take a base of action and turn away Now notice that, all of a sudden the contact, the threat has disappeared. Now, it's just something to be aware of. Do, that does not mean that you have beaten the missile. It just means that it's in the dead zone of the RWR. RWRs are not perfect, they have dead zones. Basically, anything in this kind of direction, below the belly or above the aircraft like this, is considered a dead zone for this RWR system. That missile has certainly not been beaten, it's purely because it's in our dead zone and it's something to be wary of, especially if hostiles are attacking you from up high or missiles may be shooting you from below. You will not get a warning of a radar guided missile with that effect. Let's uh, turn away and you'll see that the contact will return. You see it's back in parameters now, so we can now hear the warning again. So that's pretty much all we want to show there. It's very simple, very easy to use, very intuitive. The only variation I'd like to point out now is that the missile being fired is, is what we call a semi-active radar homing missile, a FOX-1. It does not have its own onboard radar. It's using the fire control radar from the SA-6 site. Hence, the SA-6 site is illuminated. If that missile was a fully active missile, what we call a FOX-3, like a Phoenix or an AMRAM, it would have its own radar, own track radar, installed on the missile. In that case, it would show an M sign for the actual missile because it knows where the missile is in the case of a FOX-3. So that's just something to bear in mind. If an M suddenly appears on your RWR, you have a FOX-3 inbound and it's going to give you a decent amount of information to help ev evade that missile. To summarize, it is a signal strength based azimuth RWR set with the control buttons as we've shown there. I much prefer it to a threat based RWR set like in the Hornet or the Harrier. This, once you know the different strengths of the radars, can give you superior situational and awareness. I hope that helps and see you later.